Mr. Lim, I'm in trouble. My friend just told me I need to know logic and proof for this year's exam. I have no clue about any of this. Okay, relax. There's still time. Let's go through the concepts one by one. Conjecture. It's just a statement that could be true or false, like all prime numbers are odd. Or I'm going to fail my maths exam. <laughs> right. And both those conjectures would be false. I'm not so sure about that. Implication. P arrow Q means P implies Q, or if P is true, then Q is true. Interesting thing about this one is logically the implication is true unless there's a case where P is true and Q is false. So for example, the statement, if a number is prime, then it's odd, is true unless there's a prime number that is even. Like the number two. Exactly. The number two is prime and even, so it disproves the statement. That's called a counter exam. Makes sense. So the negation of P implies Q is P and not Q. That's a bit confusing. I know, but think it back to the example we just did with the primes. P there would be that the number is prime and Q would be that the number is odd. We disprove the implication by finding the prime number that was even, P and not Q. Okay, yeah, I guess that makes sense. <laughs> Here's one that everyone finds confusing. If P is false, the implication statement P implies Q is actually true by convention. So for example, the statement, if my name is Michael, then your name is Billie Jean, is actually true. But my name's not Billie Jean. And my name's not Michael. So the statement is double wrong. Well, it's an if then statement. So it only matters what happens if the first part is true. If the first part is false, there's no way to disprove the implication, so we say it's true. That's ridiculous. <laughs> Sorry, that's Boolean logic. True or false only, what's not false is true. It's still ridiculous. I know, it seems strange. Let's move on. Okay, what about equivalences? All right, so two statements are equivalent if they both imply each other. And we use this symbol to show that. Another way of saying that is P is true if and only if Q is true. Can you give me an example? Absolutely. Let's prove the statement, a two digit number is divisible by three if and only if the sum of its digits is divisible by three. So it's an if and only if statement. We need to prove both directions. Let's do the if part first. So if the sum of the digits is divisible by three, then the two digit number is also divisible by three. So we assume we have a two digit number whose sum of digits is divisible by three. So we let the number be n equal 10a plus b. Whoa, whoa, slow down, <laughs> sir. Sorry. a and b are the digits. So for example, the number 45 is really uh, 10 times four plus five because the four is in the tens column. So 10a plus b. Ah, uh, okay, I get it. All right. Then we're also allowed to assume that the sum of the digits is divisible by three. So let's say, 3k where k is some integer and we want to prove that the number itself is divisible by 3. So 3k again? Right, that's the right idea. But we don't reuse the same letter k, we'll use a different letter to show that the sum of the digits is likely to be a different multiple of 3 than the number was itself. A different letter, so l. l is fine. We want to prove that n is equal to 3l. So starting from n is 10a plus b. That's the same as 9a plus the sum of the digits a plus b. Now, the sum of the digits was 3k. So this is now 9a plus 3k. Which are both multiples of three. Right, it's a whole, it's a multiple of three. Now we have to do the other direction. What do you mean? It was an if and only if statement. We proved the if, now we need to prove the only if. In other words, if the two digit number is divisible by three, then the sum of the digits must be divisible by three. All right, so we start from n being a multiple of three, so 3k, and it's also a two digit number, so 10a plus b again. We want to now prove that, that a plus b is also 3k. I mean, 3m for some integer m. That's it, doing well. So a plus b, well, like the opposite of before, it's 10a plus b minus 9a. 10a plus b is n, which is 3k. So a plus b must be a multiple of 3. Well done. 
we've proved both directions, so we've proved the statements are equivalent. Okay, I feel like I'm getting somewhere. What's next? Direct proofs using a sequence of direct implications. That's what we just did. Proving P implies Q by assuming that P is true and working step by step until we prove that Q is true. What else could you do? It's logic, right? There's other ways. Proof by contradiction, proof by contrapositive, but let's start with proof by cases. This is where you split a proposition up across all possible cases. So, for example, a statement the square of a non-zero integer is always positive you could split up into two cases. Case one, the integer is positive, and case two, the integer is negative, and show that in both cases, the square turns out to be positive. Yeah, makes sense. Other common cases might be even odd, or you might have three cases, like positive, negative, zero, or the three possible remainders you could have after division by three. All right, what's proof by contradiction? Ah, uh, this is a good one. You start by assuming the statement you're trying to prove is false, then show that this is not actually possible because it would break the laws of mathematics. Ooh, I like it, breaking the laws. Let's take an example. You want to prove that the log base two of three is irrational. Is that like a complex number? Well, irrational numbers are still real. They just can't be written as fractions like pi or square root of oh, two. Oh yeah, yeah, right, right. Gotcha. This is a proof that's easiest to do by contradiction. So assume that the log base two of three is rational, so we can write it as p divided by q for some integers p and q. Well, what would that mean? We could rewrite the equation in index form like this, and then even move this power of q over to get two to the power of p is equal to three to the power of q. So what? So there's something not quite right about that. In fact, it's impossible. Can you see why? Oh, I think so. Powers of 2 are like 2, 4, 8, 16, they're always even. And powers of 3, like 3, 9, 27, are always odd. Except if the powers of both zero, and that's not possible either. So we have a contradiction, and it proves that the assumption we started with must be false, which proves that log base 2 of 3 is irrational. Oh yeah, that is cool. Glad to see you're enjoying this. <laughs> enjoying is a strong word. What about contrapositive? Okay, so contrapositive is also for implication statements, so P implies Q. The contrapositive is not Q implies not P. And if you can prove that, then you've completed the proof. Say what now? I know, it does seem confusing, but let me give you a worded example. Ask me if I enjoy maths. Sir, I know you enjoy maths. Ask me. But I know the answer. Just ask me. Do you enjoy maths? If I did not enjoy maths, I would not be a maths teacher. But you are a maths teacher. So what does that mean? Well, I guess it means that you do enjoy maths. That's a contrapositive. The statement, if I did not enjoy maths, I would not be a maths teacher, is the contrapositive of, if I am a maths teacher, then I do enjoy maths. They're logically equivalent, so if you prove one of them is true, then both of them must be okay, true. Okay, can we do an example? Sure. Let's use the contrapositive to prove that if n squared plus 1 is even, then n must be odd. Okay, so we want to flip it and prove that if n is odd, then n squared plus 1 is even. Uh, not quite. That's called the converse. But it's not logically equivalent. It's possible for the original statement to be true and the converse to be false. The contrapositive, remember, is not q implies not oh, p. Yeah, yeah, right, right. So if n is not odd, then n squared plus 1 is not yeah, even. Yeah, that's it. Now you need to prove it. Start by assuming n is not odd. That's even, so n is 2k. n squared plus 1 would be 2k bracket squared plus 1. That's 4k squared plus 1. Which, yeah, that's odd. Not even. Well done. There's one more technique on the list called proof by mathematical induction. That's also a very cool method of proof. But, sir, I have to go now. I have to pick up my little sister from ballet class. Okay, well, I do have a few examples of proof by induction in this video. Check it out when you have time and let me know if it makes sense. All right, see you soon. Mm -hmm.